Bob Andelman, and you're listening to and hopefully watching the Mr. Media Interview with Angela Crocker, the author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Creating a Social Network, a title for which she wholeheartedly apologizes. Uh, <laughs> Angela, where are the landmines in setting up a social network? What should people be wary of in doing it? Well, one of the big things is thinking that you're going to set up a, a network and make money. Um, the, it is possible to create revenue through a social network, but it shouldn't be your primary goal, in my opinion. Um, there's a lot of other uh, relationship building, education, uh, even evangelizing for a cause that's dear to your heart that can be done very effectively through a social network. Um, and if sales is your primary objective, um, you're probably going to struggle a little bit to, to get traction and succeed because nobody likes joining a party and getting sold to right away. Uh, they want they want to be uh, wowed with the wine and the cheese or the beer and the chips, depending who you are. The Canadian bacon, perhaps. Sure, Canadian bacon, maple syrup. I don't play into those stereotypes. <laughs> Absolutely. Gla glass of Leblats. Um <laughs> Well, would it be uh, so? So basically, what you're saying is don't go don't go into it with the idea of of uh, making a lot of money off the people that are going to come in. Go into it with the idea that. I see. I kind of look at it as it's like secondary marketing, sort of. It's uh, if you're doing it for your business, perhaps uh, you're doing it to encourage people to be supportive and talk about your business and be in a community with other people who like it. Not necessarily to to sell them another Prius, for example, directly, but for make, making sure they're happy and probably also to hear about if if you're a business. Uh, to hear about the hassles maybe that they're having with a product, so you can solve it not just for them but for other people who might have it. Absolutely. Social networks are an amazing place for market research. Uh, by listening carefully to the conversation that's going on, you can hear about people's problems, the challenges, uh, even great innovations. They might have this super idea that um, and I drive a Mazda and there's a, there's a, a careful, careful little concealed compartment under the, uh, the bum part of the back seats that who knew it was there? And uh, it was just dead space that somebody said, hey, why don't we make that useful? And so, you know, that's where the three-inch thick manual can live and not clutter up my glove box, which is go. perfect. You know, if I need it, I know where it is. Uh, so listening to what's going on in the community is just an awesome, awesome source of research. Um, customer service, you can often uh, resolve a problem with some uh, careful advice if, if you have staff members who are listening on a regular basis and so people don't get go from a little bit irritated to flaming angry you can get to it's much easier to calm someone down when they're a little bit irritated rather than when they've got smoke coming out of their ears and flames out of the top of their head and they're shooting daggers at you uh, so it's it's good in that way too uh, I see now I know why I like you we both drive a Mazda ah well there you go Great car. I love my master. And a woman of excellent taste, obviously. Um, i, I got to come back to this. Wouldn't it be easier for me, if I want to have a social network for my business, organization, hobby, whatever it might be, to just hire someone to do it for me? Wouldn't that just simplify my life? It would. It would. Um, and there are definitely companies that will offer to do that for you. But you lose a certain amount of control of your brand. You, 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 you don't have the same kind of hands-on experience that you, you want to have. And it's not that the owner of the business um, is going to be exclusively managing the community. I would encourage you, you know, if your company is of any size, you know, 5, 10, 20, 100 employees, that more than one employee have a face and a voice in the community so that your community members get to know you. Um, hiring someone to do it for you often flattens the conversation because everything has to go through layers of approval. Uh, I had one client that was really keen. They set up a network. They saw the value in it. And they decided to uh, empower a number of staff members to be uh, participants in the community. But anything that they said had to go through six layers of approval yeah. before they could say it. Where's the spontaneity in the conversation? It's so sanitized by the time it actually got posted uh, that their community really didn't succeed, and uh, and they're not successful so far in convincing upper management to to change that that need for all those approvals. Um, I quite like um, the simpler social networking policies that, you know, be kind, do unto others as you do to yourself, uh, to your mother. You know, if you don't want it spread on the headlines of a newspaper or 
uh, you know, reveal that your grandmother's birthday party, then don't say it. It's just about common courtesy and common sense. And uh, it's unfortunate that some companies don't have that kind of faith in their employees or have the kind of employees where they can't have that faith. And it's, it's not for me to say which way is the correct perspective on that. That kind of flows into another question I had in terms of, you know, how many people do I allow to actually post or respond to posts? And, and you know, should I keep a, a tight uh, rein on that or should I let it flow free? I guess from what you just said, you would vote for letting it flow free. And hopefully the people that you leave in charge have a, have good common sense in terms of uh, what's what's legal, what could be, you know, troublesome or what would just hurt people's feelings in, in a more general sure. way. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I That's my philosophy. I, I think if you empower people to do a good job, they will do a good job. Uh, you give them some training and some guidelines, maybe educate them about you know, privacy issues or security issues. Um, make sure that they're aware of how the tools work and how they work really, really easily and don't make it too complicated for them with extra layers of unnecessary technology. Uh, you, you log into the community and you interact um, and also let them be themselves. I think that's really important too. If they're trying to be a brand, you know, the last thing I ever want to see is, is any company that says, okay, everybody's going to be this fictional character. Mm-hmm. And so the, the voice of our community is, Jane Smith and all the employees are speaking as though they're Jane Smith. I just think that's really inauthentic and and I think the community can figure that out that they're talking to different voices at different times. Reminds that's me, a great reason. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say it reminds me of the old TV show NYPD Blue where all the characters spoke with the same accent, which I thought was ridiculous. <laughs> go, <laughs> yes. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, not at all. Um, I was going to say another great reason to have multiple team members have voices in your community is as your brand grows, it's very likely that you'll have a global audience and you want to have team members in working different time zones or even placed in different cities around the world who are participating and monitoring your community, if not 24 hours a day, then then maybe 16 hours a day. Uh, Because what happens, you know, I'm on the West Coast, you're on the East Coast. Uh, we've got a time difference between us right now. This this time doesn't matter, but if it was four hours from now, I'm I'm kind of hoping that you're you're heading for bed and having a good night's sleep, uh, and you want your employees to have that same that same kind of energy in their work, uh, and you also want your community not to feel neglected. If they happen to be a fan and they're in Australia, well, if they're 16 hours ahead, then uh, they they need to be heard. They don't want to wait 10 hours for somebody to respond. Can you? Uh... Can you uh, point our uh, viewers, our listeners, to uh, some particular sites that uh, or, or companies that, that do this, uh, so they can actually take a look, and maybe we can uh, maybe we can even show uh, some screenshots. Um. Sure, sure. I can send you a list of the uh, the links, so we can provide those really clearly as well. Um, so one of my favorites is actually one called Pioneer Kitchen. Uh, it's a great website. It's it's about cooking, and it has a uh, you know, pioneer turn of the last century feel to the the graphics, but they're all very modern recipes, and it's people interacting who love to cook and feed their families. Uh, I think it's a great example of a of a community coming together. Um, I also am really fond of. Um, I'm just trying to think where I'm going here. The community of. Um, oh, Bob, give me one second here because I just forgotten the name of it, and it's so fabulous. It's the community. Where are they? I've got them marked. Lane Bryant. There we go. Good grief. You'd think I could remember that. (laughs) So Prince Clothing Brand, they actually have a community for their customers. uh, And there's sort of virtual fashion shows and all kinds of things that happen. And I think they do a great job. Um, There's also Live Nation, which, of course, many people are probably familiar with, the concert promoters. And they have a community for fans of, of music that was built on the Kick Apps platform, and they've done a great job with it. So, from from a, lo- a local feel with Pioneer Woman, although it's got a wide audience, it, it does have a, a small community feel to it. To something as big as Live Nation, there's some great examples in just those three. Very good. Well, uh, Angela, we're about to run out of time, and I want to let everybody know that you can find the Complete Idiot's Guide to Creating a Social Network by Angela Crocker, my guest today, at great bookstores everywhere or you can order it right now at a great price at mrmedia.com. You can learn more about Angela at angelacrocker.com. Uh, pe- uh, people find you on uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook as well? 
Absolutely. Uh, if you go to AngelaCrocker.com, you'll end up at my site. Uh, you tweet me as I'm Angela Crocker. That's probably the fastest way to reach me. Uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, I'm everywhere. Uh, I, I know actually during the course of this interview, I, I realized that you were on Twitter because I cheated and saw that you actually tweeted that you were having a good time here. So that <laughs> was am. nice. That was nice. Um, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Angela Crocker, thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Totally my pleasure. Thanks for your time, Bob. Great my to pleasure. talk to you. And folks, for uh, more original interviews with America's top idiots and dummies guide authors, surf over to our main website, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. If you've enjoyed today's show, subscribe for free to Mr. Media via email, RSS, or iTunes, and you'll never miss another show. You can also listen with a piece of string in Vancouver and a tin can in many, lo many other locations. Sup show your support for Mr. Media, that would be me, by supporting our sponsors, including Audible. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash radio. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash radio for your free audiobook. We're also supported by thepartyauthority.us. Call DJ Ira for all your party entertainment needs nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs. Or visit their website, thepartyauthority.us. We'll even accept a donation via PayPal if you want to help defray the cost of producing this show. Oh, it costs thousands and thousands of dollars. And if you look <laughs> over my shoulder, there's a cast of dozens hard at work keeping the hamsters running and keeping the aluminum foil and the bubble gum together. Um, if you've got an idea for a guest to comment on today's show or would like to advertise on Mr. Media, email me directly at bob at mrmedia.com. You can also follow Mr. Media on Facebook, Twitter, or our new YouTube video channel. Finally, Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate you giving up a piece of your day spending it with Mr. Media. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Angela. Nice to meet you. My today. pleasure. All right.